Good morning, everyone. We, I was actually delaying a little bit to wait for President Barack Obama to come out and speak, but he is a little late, you know, so I decided to come on and just go with what I got. Yeah? And what I got is actually plenty. Yeah. Because are you kind of wondering, was this all worth it? Why was this done? What did the Republicans really want? Do they know what they actually want? I'm not so sure they know what they want. So I'm going to put it to you this morning. Do you know what the Republicans were fighting about? First it was Obamacare, then the deficit got thrown in, then I heard a little bit scuffling about entitlements, and I heard about the sequester. Ah, <laughs> are you confused or what? Yeah, I'd like to know. Let me come closer to the camera and ask you, please let me know. So, this is what we're going to do today. I'm going to start off by saying congratulations to Cory Booker, the mayor of New Jersey, who has now become the senator-elect. But we would not have known that happened because everyone was on the edge of their seats watching these stupid wacko birds in Washington come to an agreement that they should have come to two weeks ago. So how long were we in this thing? What is it, 16 days? And how much did it cost us? $24 billion dollars caused by the party who talks about the economy all the time, who talks about spending all the time. So is there a way that we can get all these Republicans to pay the money back that it costed the country, the taxpayers of the United States of America? This is the Diana Wright Show, and we welcome you to the program this morning as we try to get some sense out of all of this. Are we happy with the agreement? Absolutely not. So we're going to experience this in January again? And people, if they're smart, will hold their monies in their pocket for the holidays because here comes January. It starts all over again. So that means your tax refund that you might be expecting, if you get one, I don't. Is it going to come or is it not going to come? So are we going to continue to band-aid our government every three months? Or are we going to continue to live with Republican hostage taking and they release one hostage at a time and if they don't like who they have, they shoot? What do we do in this great United States of America? So I'm going to talk about a nice little word this morning before I continue. Happy. Are the Republicans happy now for ruining the economy? The global economy, that is? Because, you know, the stock market is not really joyful today because they're saying, oh, so we got to do this again in January? And the global people are still not happy because they just look at us as a bunch of fools. Yeah, they're democratic. And yeah, you know, they're going to try to... <laughs> to do what? They're going to try to... Uh, you know, make it look like they were fighting for the people, for their constituents. Absolutely not. They lie. Ted Cruz was fighting for the camera time. Ted Cruz was fighting for just what Sarah Palin fought for. Publicity, write me a book, get a job on Fox, and my life is good. So let us see and wonder who are the senators in the Senate that actually voted against opening, reopening, what do you call it? Opening, reopening, they kind of opened a few things. The government of the United States. How stupid do we look? So are they happy today? And I'm going to say something to you right about now. Happiness is what you make it to be. 
There's no one else on the planet that's going to make you happy unless you make yourself happy. And do you also know, just so I, I posted it on my Facebook page and on Twitter, do you actually know that happy, when you're happy and you love yourself, you drive your enemies absolutely crazy? So I'm sure that President Obama is not completely happy today because he knows that he has to go through this again. And last night when he spoke and he was leaving, a reporter from CNN asked him, do we have to go back through this again in January? And he said assertively, very strong, no. So what does that no really mean? And what are we going to do to convince the 18 Republican senators who voted against this and wanted the government to stay shut down because you heard Senator Ted Cruz after the vote say, oh, we just had to stay one more week. We would have broken them. We just had to keep the government shut down one more week. You know, like the bully in school who bullies you and just think they can go another day to bully you and when you stand up they crawl into their grave and my grandmother always said to me when you're digging a grave for anyone even your enemy make sure you dig another one beside that because you my friend will fall into that grave before your enemy does so when Senator Ted Cruz was trying to dig the grave for Obamacare and President Obama, he should have dug one for Ted Cruz because this day, he's in that grave. Apart from his little lackey, Senator Mike Lee. So shall we look at it as adults today? Shall we look at it as educated, college degreed Americans? Or shall we look at it through the lens of wacko birds, as Senator McCain calls them, not my words. But then I wonder, Senator McCain, do you actually remember? He said his mom is 101 years old, so he's going to last for a long time. So do you, Senator McCain, the statesman that you're beginning to behave like these days again, are you forgetting or do we need to remind you that you are the one that brought us the first wacko bard from the Tea Party, Sarah Palin, who continues to come and give her voice when she's planning to release another book. So she wants us to remember her and buy her book. It's all about money and power. So what do we do? Are you going to continue to hang your happiness on politicians? Well, I'm here to advise you that you shouldn't. Because you and only you can love yourself. It's just about you. I love me. I am confident in me. I'm going to continue to pursue my passion no matter what the government does. We need the government, and I, th I think a lot of Americans are now realizing what government actually does. 800,000 federal workers were not working, and the ones that were working were working for free. Yes, yeah, some of them are going to get paid, back pay, and all of that, but some of them won't, because that was not included in the settlement, I call it. So folks, put your seat belts on, make it tight, and sit, because January is coming again with another fight. Because do you think, and I'm going to call out all their names, and I'm going to call all these names every single day that God gives me the power to speak, at this seat in my studio until it gets to where it should go in your brains that these guys should never ever 
hold political office again after costing the country $24 billion and talking about cutting entitlements? What should we have done? We should have taken that $24 billion that they lost and put it into Social Security and Medicare. How about that? And put it into Obamacare and make Obamacare better. Have you ever been to France and see how their healthcare system works? Get out of your zone, people. So we have Senator Ted Cruz from Texas. Senator Tim Scott of South Carolina. Senator Dean Heller of Nevada. Senator Chuck Grassley of Iowa. Imagine that, an older statesman behaving just like the Tea Partiers, wanting to hold the government and the American people hostage. Senator Patrick Toomey of Pennsylvania. Senator Jerry Moran of Kansas. Senator Richard Shelby of Alabama. Now, can you imagine those poor people in Alabama wanting to have the government stay shut down and for us to hit the debt ceiling? What do you think was going to happen? Well, come November 1st, nobody would have been getting a Social Security check. And I'm sure some of your doctors would not have been getting paid from Medicare, so you would not be able to go to the doctor if you're sick. How about that? Chew on that. Think about that. Utilize your brains, people. That's why God gave us brains. Senator James Reich of Idaho. I hope that's the way he pronounces his name. I don't really care anyway. Senator James Ino Inofe of Oklahoma. Oh, mm -hmm. Senator Jeff Sessions of Alabama. Senator Mark Rubio from Florida, are you truly going to just put this guy back in office when he comes around to re-election? He has a little time. But believe me, I'm in the media. Those recordings and those reminders are on tape. And unless you burn them, they will be there come 2014, 2016, and forever. They will pull them out just like Rachel Maddow did the other night and pull out all the uproar about blocking President Obama since 2009. And I will remind you that in 2008 when President Barack Obama won and everyone else was celebrating, the Republicans were meeting in their dark rooms seeing how they can block everything he does. McConnell came out and said, he will not be a second term president because I'm going to spend my time making sure he does not become a second term president. And I guess Ted Cruz, he likes to meet in the basement of Mexican restaurants. He's not going for the outspoken word. Because you see, the thief comes cloaked and comes in the dark. And so your enemies who you think are friends, they come cloaked like friends, but they're really your enemies. And the minute they get to hurt you, they turn the knife. And as I said before, when you enter a room, as my mother taught me, and the reception you get from the people in that room is based on what was said behind your back. And if you're in a group and someone in the group think they can treat you like shit, basically, to your face, and when you turn away, they give your position to someone else or offer it to them, you know for sure what has been said behind your back. So keep it in mind as you go along your day and make sure you observe and use your spirit because I have a spirit that's stronger than a lion. Yes, elephant, stronger than an elephant, I will say. I can walk into a room and feel and know what was being said about me. 
My mother taught me that, and I thank her for it. And as I got older, my spirit got stronger. My faith got stronger. As my girlfriend in Atlanta faith reminded me when I gave my life to God in Jamaica years and years and years and years ago in her presence, she remembered the faith that I had. And she said to me, I will never forget that moment that even as a new follower at that time, hey, you went to church with your grandmother and all those things and you believed, but that night and that moment made her ask herself, she's telling me this now years later, how is her faith so strong? So I have what I call crazy radical faith in God. I love myself. I am confident in who I am. And I will never allow my enemies and the devil to break me. And that is what I want you to have for yourself. This is a day that the Lord has made. You should choose to rejoice and be happy in it because no one will bring you happiness but you. So as I go down the list, Senator Rand Paul of Kentucky. Oh my God, Kentucky is very popular. That's a third. No, no, no. That was Alabama too. Kentucky. Huh. Senator Mike Lee, of course, that's the, you know, the puppy dog that follows Cruz around and does whatever Cruz says, you know, like in college, you have one person following you around. That's Mike Lee. He's from Utah. Muslim, was it? Uh, 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 Mormon town? Yeah. Romney town? Yeah. Senator Rob Portman of Ohio. Is this the same Senator Rob Portman that his son is gay and when he found out all of a sudden he supports gays oh i think so yeah i think so do you think so yeah mm -hmm. senator david vitter of louisiana senator mike crapper of idaho well i guess he could take some crap and put it on all the republicans desks today and make sure their fingers get in it senator mike Enzi of Wyoming, Senator Deb Fisher of Nebraska, Senator Pat Roberts of Kansas. Oh yes, these 18 guys wanted the government. So where is um, my good friend, Paul Ryan? He voted nay too. Where is his name on here? Yeah. Senator Paul Ryan, he voted against it, yet he was trying to act like he was going to be some peacemaker last week in the op-ed in the New York Times. I never believed him for a minute, did you? Mr. Deficit Hawk guy? Mr. Finance Guru? He's not talking much about the deficit these days because President Obama stuffed it down his throat by cutting the deficit almost in half believe it or not. So the 144 Congress people now who voted against this and wanted the government to stay shut down, I'm going to get you their names too. Because I want you to never, ever, ever forget who they are and why you cannot vote for them again. Because they're a bunch of fools who don't know what they're doing. And they obviously did not know what the government runs and what the government does not run. So they close down the things and then they go and act as if, oh, it wasn't us. It was them. It wasn't me. You know, Shaggy has a song that says it wasn't me. So the Republicans are now saying it wasn't me because they realize that the public is simply fed up with their antics. One person called it what? What did, uh, let me go here. The approach of the US default deadline 
was greeted around the world with a mixture of angst and anger. It's hard not to believe lunatics have taken charge of the asylum in Washington. That was declared by the newspaper in Australia. The newspaper is called the Australian. Predicting significant damage to the global economy if the government can't pay its debts. So why is it that the people in Australia seem a little smarter than those in the asylum in Washington? The lunatics. Wow. I can continue here. America is diminished by the standoff. The editorial continued. Government shutdowns, debt defaults, and the shenanigans witnessed in Washington have no place in the world's superpower. Are we still the superpower? Hmm, China, which is America's biggest creditor, with $1.28 trillion in U.S. treasuries, went as far as calling for a new world order. And what is it called again? De-Americanized model. That may be an extreme reaction. No, I don't think so. But international economists and opinion makers aren't holding back as they assess crisis. International Monetary Fund Managing Director Christine Lagarde, she said the prospect of default combined with the government shutdown now in its, at that time when she was making the statement, that was the 14th day, overshadowed their annual meeting. So just close your eyes and picture this. The IMF is supposed to be this arm of the government, but the US is really the driving force there, along with the World Bank. And they go around and they lend all these countries like Jamaica and these little places money. But then they hold their necks and they pull it because they suffocate the people. Now what I believe should happen is that all the countries that the IMF has loaned money should now start behaving like the Republicans. We are not going to pay back this money unless you do XYZ, whatever your XYZ is. Get up and stand up to the IMF today, all you countries out there who feel you're slaves to the IMF. Jamaica had their battles with them. One time they were with them, next time they weren't. You know, you know, you know. So what if? You know that famous word, two words, what if? All the countries that the U.S. is trying to democratize say, go away, America. We don't want your democracy. It's nasty. It's disrespectful. Do you see the disrespect that they played and gave to President Barack Obama? And the guy is so gracious. He continues to try to be conciliatory. But I'm here to tell you that I watched It's Supernatural with Sid Roth, which is one of my favorite shows on television, period. There was a man who prophesied that the President Barack Obama that you're going to see now is the one you saw through this crisis. He will be shocking people because he's going to stand up and be firm. Remember folks, he no longer will be running for any office in the United States of America. And I'm sure First Lady Michelle Obama is counting the months to getting out of that White House and getting back to her life with her children and her mother and her family and her husband. Because I don't believe that there's anyone on this planet that could take the disrespect and the name calling and the, you know, blatant racism towards you and not feel a little blue. So what am I, am I asking all of you from around the world and in the United States who are joined on this program, the Diana Wright Show today? I ask you please to pray a deep, deep prayer for President Barack Obama, 
First Lady Michelle Obama, her, their two daughters, and her mother, who must be suffering quietly in that big old White House. Because everything that happened and is happening and will happen since 2008, it's all about racism. It's all about white people not wanting a black man in the claimedly White House. Who died and left them in charge and think, let them think that they were the only ones to occupy that house? But you know what I said? Join me in my prayers for the first family and this nation because we need to stop the chaplain he was wonderful the entire time as he chastised them in prayer asking them to do the right thing my golly what do we look like to the world today a patchwork kind of sort of agreement this is not an agreement so you kick the can for three months and then you come back and you murder the can and again now, all the financial people on Wall Street that gave all these crazies money to elect them to office, what are you planning to do for the next election? Are you going to give your money to wacko words again? Hmm. And, you know, I just want to say that Sarah Palin needs to just go home, count her money, and shut up. And just talk on Fox. No one wants to hear you because you're too negative, you're too hateful, and you're too evil, and you're too money-grabbing. It's too obvious now. Okay, if there is that degree of disruption, that lack of certainty, and we still have this. I'm reading this like it's past tense, but it isn't. We're still having this, people. Because are you certain what's going to happen in January? They tell us, oh, they're not going to do... I don't believe them. We're going to go down and see and watch this movie all over again in January 15, February 7. The lack of trust in the U.S. signature, which is the IMF, it would mean massive disruption the world over and we would be at risk of tipping yet again into recession. So all those 18 senators, Republicans no doubt, and all those 144 in the Congress, women mixed in, wanted to keep the government closed and the debt ceiling breached. Do you think they love America? Absolutely not. There's no way you can have love in your heart and do what they did. They just could not have any love in their hearts. And they thought they were going to break President Obama? Remember I told you, the man who spoke on Sid Roth's It's Supernatural, you can go on Sid Roth's Supernatural and find that guy. He said the Obama that you're going to see is not the Obama you're expecting. Okay? Alrighty. Shu Jane, chief executive of Germany's Deutsche Bank, said, blowing the October 17th deadline, I guess now it's going to be blowing the February 7th deadline, would be utterly catastrophic. There isn't life beyond the fault, he said, at a financial industry conference in Washington this past week. This would be a very rapidly spreading fatal disease. The governor of France's central bank, Christian Noyer, told Le Figaro, the Washington's inability to pay its bills would be a thunderbolt for the financial markets and cause extremely violent and profound economic turbulence. There were complaints that while the Republican and Democrats in Washington were bickering with little regard for the dire consequences to other countries who depend on American stability, world leaders are saying 
get on with it and get this resolved. It's not just about you, Republicans. Mike Kendall, executive director of JB Ware, a private wealth management firm in Australia and New Zealand, told The Age of Melbourne, that's a newspaper, this isn't the time to be tap dancing to the midterm elections in the U.S. This affects world... Hmm. The world. Just think about that for a minute. It's not just about us Americans. It's about the world reacting to the ongoing impasse with fits and starts. So we fits and we start. Oh, we are right now. We are fits, I guess. So come January, we're gonna start going bu 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 buckle again, and then we're gonna have to fix again. Can we get a long? Can we just get rid of this debt ceiling thing? I know it might take a process, but come on, can we just get rid of it? And can we just save the presidency, not Barack Obama? President Barack Obama, not him, save the presidency. Because every president will have to deal with this. If a Republican wins in 2016, my God, the Republic, the Democrats in, in the House and maybe the Senate are going to do the same thing all over again. How about that? Hostage takers, I release each of you based on the fact that I think you may be important. <laughs> wow, what a country. So, and as you see, the stock market is not really responding well this morning because they are still saying, okay, guys, we rallied the market yesterday because we thought you were going to come up with a good plan. But as far as I'm concerned, as far as the market is concerned, as far as all Americans should be concerned, this is a non-starter. The debt ceiling need to be gone and Republicans need to be keep on dropping in the polls. Let us get those numbers to zero. From 20 what is it, 24 for the Republicans and 21 for the Tea Partiers? We need those numbers to go down to one. Ladies and gentlemen, get busy. We'll take a break and come back in just a moment. My name is Diana Wright. <laughs> and I thank you so much for joining me today from around the world and in the United States. Hello everyone, I am just asking you from around the world and in the United States to partner with The Diana Wright Show. Sponsor The Diana Wright Show or advertise on The Diana Wright Show. To do so, please call 561-228-1921. That's 561-228-1921. Please sponsor, partner with us, and advertise with us to make the show a big hit just like you do by liking us on Facebook and following me on Twitter. Thank you so much. Don't forget the number to call 561-228-1921. That's 561-228-1921. Also, we invite you to invite me to be at your event as a speaker and to tell you about my book, Deadly Negligence and so we encourage you to partner with us right here on the Diana Wright Show. Advertise with us and sponsor the Diana Wright Show. 561-228-1921. Thank you so much. Alrighty, we are back and we thank you so much once again for joining us today. <laughs> it is incredible to see politicians wrecking the country because of their egos. Simple. It's all about ego. It's all about my power. It's all about who can get to the microphone first. It's all about who can get the interview on Fox and CNN and MSNBC. It's all about how can I get my name worldwide recognition. It's all about how many books can I write and sell and the fools will go out and buy it. 
Hmm? We should think about all that we are doing to ruin our own beloved America. So, on a lighter note, this probably isn't what parents wanting to get their kids back to school want to hear. <laughs> but as long as there are still symptoms present, and I'm telling you this because it's flu season and people are beginning to get sick. Congestion, runny nose, sneezing, coughing, you're still contagious. You know, people like to say to you, oh, you know, my, 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 my cold is a week old, so it's stale. It's not going to, oh, yes, it is still contagious. But given that the average cold lasts one to two weeks, it's not realistic to shut yourself or your kids home, you know, behind closed doors for every sniffle. Now, if they have a little sniffle, they're not having a fever and all that. They can go to school. But if they're running a fever with that sniffle and that cold and that congestion, don't send them out there to contaminate the whole school. Even when you're starting to feel better, be sure to practice good hygiene, says Davis Lou, MD, a board certified family doctor. Cover up your cough. And ladies and gentlemen, when you cough, don't do it in your hands. Cough in your elbow, okay? Cough in your elbow, because more than likely you ain't gonna take that elbow and wipe your face, but you'll take your hand and wipe your face or do something with it before you get the chance to wash it. So elbow, not hands, when you cough. Wash your hands frequently to avoid sharing your germs. So it's flu season now, I cannot stress it enough. Hand washing is important. And contrary to popular belief, the color of your mucus. Now you know you have mucus that comes up when you're sick sometimes. It's white, sometimes it's green, sometimes it's ugh. Isn't a good indicator of whether or not you're still capable of passing on your illness. Unless your runny nose is caused by allergies, Consider yourself contagious for as long as there's stuff leaking out of your nose. My boss has a cold. This is someone, this is just funny. So someone is complaining that my boss has a cold. She stayed home yesterday. Today she's coming in. Now, today is also National Boss Day. <laughs> what do I do? The advice was, say happy boss day, now get out. <laughs> and go back home. We don't need you here spreading your germs on all of us. <laughs> okay, we're going to take another break right here and come back to you in just a slither of a moment. We are thanking you again, and we love you, love you, love you, and thank you, thank you, thank you for liking us on Facebook and going back to watch the shows after they have aired. If you can't miss the live show on my website at www.dianawrighttv.webs.com. And thanks to all of you who are calling, who heard me on John T's program or on Hot 105 with Rodney. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, let's go. Take another break right now. Hello everyone, it doesn't matter who you are, how, rough, how poor you are, but there has to be a point in your life and you will come to that point where you have to take someone you love to the hospital. But have you ever considered that you could take that loved one, in my case my only child, to the hospital in a normal state? And then you leave five months later, brain damaged, in a wheelchair, without your senses. This is my true story, Deadly Negligence, the book, available on Amazon and at my website, dianawrighttv.webs.com. I'm asking you today, get a copy, support my story. Let us get this out there because this story will captivate you. It will shock you. It will give you 
increase your faith, make you believe miracle. Thank you for picking up your copy today. Just in case you know Oprah Winfrey or Tyler Perry or Mr. Levinson, let them know this is worth a movie. Thank you. Get your copy today. That's right. You need to get your copy of the my new book, Deadly Negligence. It is good. And it tells you a lot. You will learn. Some people learned. Some people cried. Some people are sorry for me. <laughs> I don't want you to be sorry for me, really. Because, yes, it was a tragic, devastating, unimaginable journey. But God. But God, but God is so good. He is so good. And through his son, Jesus, I remember the hairdresser saying to me, with your Jesus, all things are possible. But you must believe and you must have faith and you must mix it with the word. And the word is called the Bible. Take some time. Read even one psalm per night. If you're too busy, one verse is good. Just keep on doing it. Keep on believing. and Keep on trusting God. Because he will give you all the desires of your heart. I promise he will. So I hope you're going to join me on Saturday for the event that Rad Wellness is sponsoring in my honor. My first book signing this is a life event come on now join me people it's a life event this saturday october 19th in plantation midtown 24 the alibi room 700 southwest 78th avenue and if you need a zip code it's 33324 because a lot of you're putting it into your navigation system Right behind the fountains, easy to find, and you will have, you'll be treated with a raw food demonstration of desserts and breads and, oh, wonderful stuff. Onion bread, brownies made without eggs and butter and all that kind of stuff. And yes, you'll get to see Dax and see me and see Vanya. And my golly, I must say congratulations to my friend Dax and Vanya and Rad Wellness. They now have an app, <laughs> Aqualife. Just go into your Google store, put it in and download it. It's free. My golly, I am so proud. I am so proud. I am so proud of them for doing this. I always wanted to know someone who owns an app. <laughs> now I do. So join the celebration of Aqualife app. That is Red Wellness. My goodness. I, I you know, I, I downloaded it last night after I got off the show and it was just wonderful. It has this little, like, alligator looking thing as its icon, so don't be fooled by that. But it is just wonderful. I am just so, 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 so proud of Dax and Vanya for doing this. I now know people, someone who I know has an app. <laughs> How many people do you know have an app? So come and meet the guy with the app and the lady with the app on Saturday. That would be part of the celebration, all right? So looking forward to seeing you there. Anyway, I am so proud also of the sheriff, a sheriff here in Florida in Polk County. After investigating the suicide of a 12-year-old girl for nearly a month, a Florida sheriff was so outraged by a remorseless Facebook post on Saturday that he arrested a pair of teenage girls in connection with the case. After Paul County Sheriff Grady Judd saw a post on Facebook, that he claims was written by one of the alleged bullies, he decided to move for a swift arrest. This week, on Monday, authorities arrested the alleged 
14 year old author of the post and another 12 year old girl allegedly involved in the bullying of Rebecca Sedwick who committed suicide on September 9th and I feel so bad for that parent of Sedwick because this just did not need to happen the girls were charged with third-degree felony aggravated stalking and released to their parents on Saturday morning the 14 year old did something that was despicable on top of what she already did that was terrible Judd told Matt Lauer on today on Wednesday that was a post she put on Facebook and that post said I know Rebecca is dead and I don't care the words were much more graphic than that of the letters were so we looked at that and said she doesn't get this at all oh my god you taunt someone to commit suicide yeah they might be weaker than you are and you're the bully and you are happy and you don't care that they committed suicide what is happening to us is that teenager loving herself I don't think so I think she's in hate of herself Judd spoke with his detectives and supervisors on Monday afternoon and they told him they had enough of a case to charge the girls who were arrested on Monday night of course in her alleged post on Facebook that hastened the arrest authorities say the 14 year old who has been charged wrote yes I K which means I know I bullied Rebecca ND I guess that means and she killed herself but capital I D G A F can you figure out what that means I don't give a word that we can't say on that on television or online can you imagine that coming from a 14 year old who is a bully at a news conference on Tuesday judge showed the girls pictures and released their names but because they are minors they're not their names are not being printed on any media the bullying began when the 14 year old listen to this part I find I found this so interesting the bullying began when the 14 year old started dating a boy that Sedwick had been seeing according to the sheriff the older girl threatened to fight Sedwick when they were sixth graders six graders at Crystal Lake Middle School last year and also convinced the 12 year old to start bullying Sedwick that's their her accomplice yeah according to Judd that is the younger girl then beat up Sedwick at school so the 14 year old got her younger counterpart to beat up Sedwick Rebecca Sedwick who then committed suicide and they IDGAF we are going to arrest them anyway but we were trying to put the entire case together as you know we're having trouble getting information from social media ask.fm because they're offshore so it was taking some time okay so who is ask.fm who is offshore I'm gonna check that out but when we saw this is the sheriff still speaking but when we saw that cavalier attitude you know when we saw that despite Rebecca dying jumping to her death being bullied by this girl and another girl and she's back on Facebook she can be taunting or bullying another child we're not going to accept that and no one should and parents you must check with your children when they come home and they look sad and they don't look the way you expect them prod and prod until you get the answer most of the times it was a bully or it is a bully or a bullying session going on I noticed that in my daughter 
she wouldn't tell me and I just kept going and going until she confessed that she was being bullied at school. But you know me, I have no fear. So what did I do? I made her point him out to me. That was the lead bully because it was all, it's always a gang of them. So I didn't want to attack him at the school and I didn't want to attack him, period. So one evening I'm driving my car and he's walking on the other side of the road. And I asked my daughter, I don't know why I asked her that because I didn't know who the person was. I just say, my spirit just told me that that was a bully. But I wasn't sure she was going to say yes. So I said to her, is that the bully that's bullying you at school? She didn't want to answer and then she said yes. And I called him my name. In my car, he's across the street. And I said, hello, so and so. My name is Diana Wright McLaughlin. This is my daughter, Paviel McLaughlin. You have been bullying her and you need and must stop. Because if you don't, you will be sorry. Have a nice day, my love. Enjoy the rest of your evening. And he actually said thank you. Because I said it in such a nice, sweet voice, I guess. Since that day, when I reported it to the principal and they had them apologize, it's gone. Because bullies are like that, you see. You've got to make them know that you're not afraid. And even though your child might be afraid, don't attack them or beat them up or anything like that. Just speak to them and let them see your face. Let them know that your child is not alone at school because you're there in spirit and you will come. So that's my message to parents right now. Okay? Another unfortunate story. And again, we have to just say congratulations to Cory Booker of New Jersey, the Senator-elect. Yes, Cory Booker. He kind of looked like he just want to be some president. He's acting like he doesn't want to be, but I think he would be good presidential material. Well, he seems to be in the Hollywood kind of mode because all the Hollywood people like him. But I don't care about that. I'm listening to what's coming out of his mouth. I'm seeing, yeah, he might have done what he did in Jersey for show, but that's okay. Politicians are show makers. And they like to put on a show like Senator Ted Cruz. <laughs> but when you put on a show, you must be doing something good to help people. And that's what Cory Booker did. He put on a show. He went to live with the homeless. He did all of those things in Jersey. And even though he had his eyes on the governorship of Jersey or the senator, but maybe he had the governor's eyes first because Senator Lautenberg died and then Senate seat became available and he went for that because he realized that he can't meet good old Chris Christie. Because he is big, he's not just big in size, he's big in voice. <laughs> so congratulations to Senator-elect Cory Booker, who I think you better watch. He's going to go to Washington and do some things. Maybe he has to go take off his clothes and, you know, do some antics in the set for them to wake up and smell and realize that they're hurting American people. Or maybe he'll just catch Senator Cruz in a corner and say, Brother, are you aware of what you're doing? The damage you caused, the amount of money you costed the American economy? $24 billion with a B? We'll watch that. Anyway, we have to take another break. And I'm asking you please to follow me on Twitter. What is wrong with you? Why won't you follow me on Twitter? Do I have to beg on my knees? I don't want to do that. <laughs> Remember, April 30th, 2014 is International I Love Me Day. I want you to start thinking about what will you do special for you on that day. Share it with me on Facebook and Twitter. And join the conversation on the Diana Wright Show, Monday through Friday. 10.30 a.m. We are live. The number to call, 
561-228-1921. That's 561-228-1921. Join the conversation. Like us on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. Alrighty, yes, 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 we are back and we welcome you again to the Diana Wright Show live online every day, Monday through Friday from 10.30 to 11.30. We started a little late this morning because I was waiting to hear what President Obama had to say. I saw him last night. I, he's a humble guy. I don't think he's going to be blasting any Republicans, which he really should, but he's not going to. That's not his style. So we'll just give you one final story about slavery. Some 30 million people are enslaved worldwide, trafficked into brothels, forced into manual labor, victims of debt bondage, or even born into servitude, a global index on modern slavery showed on Thursday. That's today. What are you thinking right now? You thought slavery was all over with? No, it's not. Almost half are in India, where slavery ranges from bonded labor in quarries and kilns to commercial sex exploitation. Although the, <laughs> the scourge exists, in all 162 counties surveyed by Walk Free, an Australian-based rights group, its estimates of 29.8 million slaves worldwide is higher than other attempts to quantify modern slavery. I'm going to give you the rest of that story tomorrow because it is important for us to realize that when we're complaining about things that are going on in our own lives, we truly need to think about others, their struggles, what they're going through. It's not all about you, Senator Ted Cruz. It's about the American people that you hurt. The 800,000 people who lived in anxiety as the days ticked on and on and on with the government shutdown. It's not about you Tea Partiers who came to Washington with one goal, obstruct Barack Obama. It's not about you meeting on the night of his inauguration in 08 to see how you can block him and make sure he never won a second term. It's not about meeting in the basement of the Mexican restaurant to try to cut him down and break him and break his one big signature legislation called the Affordable Care Act. Is it about the fact that the Republicans simply want to destroy America at any cost? Is it about the tea partiers who are so vile in their disrespect for the presidency and the current president of the United States, Barack Hussein Obama? What is it about? Is it simply about racism and the fact that a black man and his black family are living in the White House? Did you make it white because you wanted only white people in it? Would you have loved President Barack Obama more if he looked more like his mother who came from Kansas and is indeed white? What do we want in this country of hate? Shall we all try to find someplace else to live where it's not such a living on the edge governing by crisis and hostage taking? What is it? Are we going to be a country who only talks about God and talks about being conservative but indeed we are haters, enviers and wicked human beings? And liars on top of it? How do we go through this? 
how do we end this? Is there an end to this? Or will we have to wait until 2016 to see if we can get another white person in the White House? It breaks my heart, but I will never allow it to break my spirit. And yes, I might be sad today, but give me an hour and I will rejoice because God is still in charge. Not the Tea Party, not the Republican Party, not the Democrats, not even President Barack Hussein Obama. God, through his son Jesus, is in charge. So let's watch and see what he does to those 18 senators topped off by Senator Ted Cruz and Paul Ryan and Marco Rubio and all those others and Rand Paul and all those 144 Congress people who wanted to continue this charade, this hostage, hostage taking without thinking or caring a damn about the American people. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you love something, set it free. If it comes back, it's yours. If it doesn't, it was never yours. Keep saying the three man magic words, I love me, be happy, and drive your enemies crazy.